Hello everyone and welcome to our Sunday service here at St Thomas's Werribee. It's very lonely here with just us two, my wife Ali, myself, but uh, welcome to our worship this morning. I hope you're doing okay and are coping with this COVID lockdown. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The sentence for today, neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the first and great commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect prayer, the prayer for the day, which is somewhere here. Here it is. O God, the fount of wisdom, you have revealed to us in Christ the hidden, hidden treasure and the pearl of great price. Grant us your Spirit's gift of discernment, that in the midst of the things of this world we may learn to value the priceless worth of your kingdom and be ready to renounce all else for the sake of the precious gift that you offer. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have Ali for the first reading. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. 
but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that we might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those, and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will not he, sorry, will he not be with him, also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at the 44th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. He came to his own hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue so that they were astounded and said, where did this man get this wisdom from and these deeds of power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And, not all his, uh, and are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offence at him. But Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their own country and in their own house. And he did not do many deeds of power there because of their disbelief. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, life's certainly got a bit tougher, hasn't it? 
the COVID virus and the way that people have become so lax about the safeguards so quickly has really made it hard for us and brought about some more time in lockdown. We're cut off from the rest of the world. We're cut off from the rest of Australia. We're cut off from rural Victoria even, which is very difficult for us because we're actually right on the edge. The roadblocks, the checkpoints are very much just there in front of us. And then with having to remain within our local area, we are even cut off from the rest of Melbourne. I remember a few weeks back, a man was, was caught driving into the city to get a, a particularly good butter chicken. He wasn't allowed to do that. And then when we even do, when we do go out in our local area or within the guidelines, we have to wear masks. So what happens then is we can't see each other's smiles. And I know it's all for a good reason. It's to increase our safety, to protect ourselves and protect others. And for that reason, it is a good thing to wear a mask. But it's still hard to miss that communication. It's hard because we are built for society. We are built for relationship. It's hardwired into us. We can see each other on screens and hear each other on phones, but it's not the same as seeing each other in person. And that's a real struggle for most of us, I think. At a time in our lives when it's highly probable that our stresses are at a maximum, and for some people they're off the scale, it's a lot more difficult to turn to someone close for help and to turn to them in person. Let's face it, talking's one thing, but sometimes what we need is a hug. And when we can't, it's easy to develop a bit of separation anxiety. We don't want to be on our own. We don't want to be lonely. Now, right through the Old Testament, when the Jewish people suffered war, exile, famine and drought, and even sickness, it was often interpreted as meaning that God had left them. Now, God's presence was important to them. The actual physical presence, I mean, in the Holy of Holies, in the temple. So if things went bad, it was an easy conclusion to come to, that God had gone. Indeed, one of Ezekiel's visions was of Yahweh, God, leaving the temple because of the abominations that were committed, being committed there and leaving the people to their fate. And so it is this understanding that is behind what Paul is writing in our excerpt from the letter to the Romans today. It's not an easy time for the church in Rome. It is being rocked by an internal division between Jewish Christians and pagan converts to Christianity and conflicting views on whether one had to convert to Judaism to be a Christian, to be a true follower of Jesus. Now, Paul addresses this in his letter, but he also addresses the wider context where Jewish people have been evicted from Rome by Emperor Claudius, I think in about 48. That's 0048, not 1940, if you know what I mean. And they had only recently been allowed back by the new Emperor Nero, who then later went on, of course, to full-on persecution mode on the Christians after he blamed them for the great fire of Rome that he himself lit and played the fiddle while it was burning, so they say. But even before this persecution, it was difficult for, the, for Jews, for Jewish Christians and Gentile converts. So Paul's statements this morning are aimed at reassuring the Roman church of God's eternal presence, even when things are tough and when it seems like God is distant. When we can't pray, the Spirit prays for us with sighs too deep for words. When it seems like nothing makes sense, all things work together for good for those who love God. It might be hard, 
but all things pass. When it seems like everything is against us, if God is for us, who is against us? And when it seems like God has abandoned us, when we fear all hope is lost, I am convinced that neither death, sorry, death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. While things that happen here may separate us from each other, things like this damn disease, nothing will separate us from God's love. Nothing. And this is a treasure worth giving up everything else for. The inclusion in something far greater than we could ever imagine. Membership of Jesus' large family. This is the pearl of great price for us at this time. This is the treasure. That when we are separated, when many of us are very much separated from the ones we love, we are never separated from the love of God which personally gives me something to hang on to. I miss our family interstate. And I feel intensely this separation and the fear that this disease and the, the changed social conditions have brought on us. And the realisation that it is very, very close to us all. But I know that our Lord walks with us in this and that he is never far away. And maybe that is what I need to get through. Maybe that's what I need to remember a bit more often. Maybe this is what we all need to get through. To remember that we are not alone. That we will get through this. It won't last forever. That all things must pass. It won't be forever. But the kingdom will be forever. Hang on to that. Treasure it. And it will get you through. The Lord be with you. Well, let us stand. <laughs> stand. If you're sitting at home on the couch, you can sit on the couch. Whatever. Let's just say the Nicene Creed and affirm our faith. We believe in one Lord, one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again according, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Well, Lord, we pray for your world. We pray for all of the people, millions of people around the world who are affected by disease those who are afflicted with disease and those who support them, care for them, love them. Be with those who work to 
alleviate these diseases, the medical researchers, doctors, all the rest that coming up with vaccines and treatments and all of those things. In particular, we pray for your guidance for those who are working on a COVID vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for your church and pray for the church throughout the world and the work that the church does to help to alleviate other people's suffering. We pray for our own place here in the kingdom, for our own parish. We pray for our parish leaders, for parish council, our wardens, for everyone who does the slightest thing for the parish, we give eternal thanks. And we pray that we may hang in there and, and after this, come back together and continue to grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who we know who aren't well and we particularly remember people in our parish, on our parish prayer list who are, are struggling. And, uh, and, and also remember Shireen in hospital at the moment and uh, we bring her before you lord and her family we pray for the residents of local aged care facilities who are struggling with um, covid and the lockdown and all the other stuff that goes along with it in particular the isolation lord we Pray that you will help bring suffering to an end. Pray that healing may happen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we give thanks for those who have gone before us. The people for whom we mourn, the people we miss. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. The greeting of peace. You want to come over here, Ali? We are the body of Christ. And the Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Peace be with you, everyone. Now, if you have communion at home, uh, have it ready, because very soon we will have communion together. And I hope it, it helps us all to stay in touch with each other in that spiritual sense and maintain that sense of communion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, faithful God, always and everywhere. For with your only begotten Son and life-giving Spirit, you are the one true God from everlasting to everlasting. At the dawn of time, you wrought from nothing a universe of beauty and splendour, bringing light from darkness and order from chaos. You formed us, male and female, in your image and endowed us with creative power. We turned away from you, but you did not abandon us. You called us by name and searched us out, making a covenant of mercy, giving the law, and teaching justice by the prophets. 
And so we praise you, joining with your faithful people of every time and place, singing the eternal song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When the fullness of time was come, you sent your Son to be born of Mary. Bright image of your glory, he learnt obedience to you in all things, even to death on a cross, breaking the power of evil, freeing us from sin, and putting death to flight. You raised him from death, exalting him to glory, and the new day dawned. On the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ shared food with his friends, his companions on the way. While at table, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and giving it to them said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup of wine. And giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, living God, as we obey his command, we remember his life of obedience to you, his suffering and death, his resurrection and exaltation, and his promise to be with us forever. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate his saving death until he comes. Accept, we pray, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration, that all who eat and drink at this table may be strengthened by Christ's body and blood to serve you in the world. As one body and one holy people, may we proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, eternal God, now and forever. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Living God, in this holy meal you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us. Give us courage for our pilgrimage and bring us to the joys you promise. We pray together. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, folks, uh, some notices. Uh, first of all, some thank yous. Now, I want to um, thank uh, David and Barry for... Uh, oh, sorry, Daniel and Barry uh, for mowing the lawns the other day. That was, uh, that was very good. It's, um, it's getting a bit long. Uh, for Lynn and Patricia for continuing to produce the newsletter. Uh, for Louisa and the pastoral care team, there's a massive amount of work going on there uh, behind the scenes. Um, people, uh, the pastoral care team helping everyone stay in touch with, with each other and with the, with the church. Um, and, and David Carlin, for, uh, who's helping us with the memorial garden. Now there's, uh, look, can I also ask that you pray for Shireen too? She is in hospital. Um, in intensive care and she really needs your prayers um, any uh, if, if you uh, any questions or you want to get in touch um, please ring myself or Louisa rather than Miguel at this time he's uh, pretty inundated with calls thank you uh, now uh, virtual morning tea with uh, with myself and Ellie uh, we had one last week and it was a scream. We had a great time. So uh, I invite you to do it again. The link is in the, the pew sheet, um, which hopefully will work. It should have gone out uh, as a, uh, in part of the email as well. But look, if you have any trouble, give, give it a try before, um, uh, give yourself plenty of time before uh, the day, before the actual event. And give it a try. Make sure the link works. And, and then if it doesn't, please get in touch with me. Uh, we're still working all this stuff out. It's been a lot to learn, hasn't there? Um, also, uh, for anyone that would like to have home communion, uh, the offer's still open. Please just, just leave a message at the, um, on the church phone. And uh, I'll, um, myself or Louisa or, or someone from pastoral care team will drop it around to you. Uh, now, other things. Um, now, some of uh, people who attend the 8.30 service uh, may remember Jill Angwin. Uh, she passed away this week and her, her funeral will be uh, in the church here on Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Unfortunately, we're limited to 10 people only, uh, but apparently the, uh, the funeral directors will be live streaming. So um, that will be on the Tobin Brothers website as far as I know. Uh, we may even uh, record it here too. I think that's all of the notices. I'll just double check. I'm looking, and and, um, and if if anyone knows of of anyone that would like to have an audio recording who doesn't have access to internet, smartphones, all that sort of stuff, um, and if they would like an audio recording on a CD or something like that of of the services that have happened so far um, please encourage them to get in touch with me or, or get in touch with me yourself and um, we'll see what we can do to facilitate that all right so folks don't forget i'm on the end of the phone there is there's also a home phone number in the pew sheet now if you uh would if you don't want if it costs too much to to call a um a mobile phone for you, please don't hesitate to ring the, the home number which is in there. We're always here, 
we're always ready to talk. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. amen. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have as good a week as you can.